Hey guys, Freddy with Portman Mods and Fred Tech here. I am so excited for this video. This video and product has been a long time in the making. I came out with another brake kit for the Supra. This time it's for the front of the Mark III Supra. A couple years ago, I made a big brake kit for the rear of this car, which did really well. People seem to really like it. And I decided I wanted to upgrade the front brakes on the Supra as well, but I wanted to keep it all Toyota parts. I did previously have the Mercedes big brake kit on the Mark III Supra. That's a very common upgrade for these cars. Some people don't like mix and matching parts like that, having Mercedes stuff and Nissan stuff on a Toyota. So I wanted to make a big, big brake kit for the front of the Supra and wanted it to be all Toyota parts. So that's what I did. It took quite a while and many prototype brackets to make it work. Finally got a batch of these CNC machined build aluminum brackets and these brackets allow you to mount a massive Lexus LS460 brake caliper. Now it's gotta be from the all wheel drive LS460, not the rear wheel drive. So it's gotta be an all wheel drive caliper. And then it allows you to use a Lexus RC350 F Sport rotor. This thing is absolutely massive. It's 356 millimeters. A lot of people have asked me if you can use an ISF brake rotor because they're the same diameter. You cannot. The ISF rotor has a different rotor height, which that's a different measurement than the diameter, but it's got to be the RC350 F Sport rotor. If you try to use an ISF or GSF rotor on this, it will not work. And they do require 18 inch wheels. As for like the offset and stuff, I cannot tell you or guarantee what other wheels it will fit. You may or may not need spacers, but you would definitely need at least 18 inch wheels to fit these brakes. They're absolutely massive. You do have to cut off the steering stop portion on the factory knuckle, which I did years ago for more angle on this car. And that's why I'm gonna be doing the install video for these brackets on another car that isn't already chopped up and mutilated like mine, because pretty much all that needs done was already done to this car a long time ago. So in addition to needing 18 inch wheels to clear this brake kit, there is a little bit of cutting involved. You cut off the bottom of the steering knuckle so the bracket can fit. If you have the stock, Mark III Super brakes on it already, you don't even need to change the brake hoses. It'll take the stock Super brake hoses, but if you have other brakes like the Mercedes, like I came from, you will have to get another set of brake hoses and go back. But all in all, including the price of these brackets, if you shop in the right spot for the calipers, you go on eBay and you can get the calipers for 150 a pair, you can, you can do this entire brake kit, this huge brake kit, for under $600, definitely under $700. It's absolutely crazy how affordable all this stuff is. We're gonna be using my friend Tommy Supra for the install video. He's got a pretty cool Mark III Supra. Let's get to the install. I'm gonna show you how to do the left side. I did the right side off camera, but here is the left bracket. Now this car doesn't have the stock Supra brakes. It's got the Mercedes kit on it. The only difference with that is we have to change the brake line or brake hose. If you have the stock Mark III Supra brakes, you don't even need to change the brake hose, it's really nice. Obviously the first step for this is we have to get these old calipers off. We did not get as lucky on this side with the hub centric ring. Since we're coming from the Mercedes brakes on this car, we do have this hub centric ring that we have to remove. A lot of people go with aluminum ones, which are great for durability, but they can get stuck on there. We also need hub centering rings for the Lexus rotors on this car, but we use my 3D printed ones. Try to save some brake fluid. I'm gonna put this cap on here for now. First thing we have to modify is this dust shield. You could either try to cut out this outer rim and bend it back and you know mutilate it, or just completely remove it. Choice is yours. We're pretty much choosing to just completely remove it. It's just four bolts and then a little bit of cutting with some sheet metal shears. Do some relief cuts around these bolt heads so you can get a tool in there.
Now we're at the part where I did say there is a little bit of cutting involved with this kit. So on the steering knuckle right here, this is a like a steering stopper bolt. This does need to be cut off to fit the bracket. And then just a tiny bit of massaging on this ridge back here. Um, you know, this line isn't precise, but about here is where you need to do a cut. Um, and you'll see when you get, try to fit the bracket if it's interfering, but basically, you know, about that line. Now it's important to note when you do cut this part of the steering knuckle, if you don't cut off enough of that steering knuckle, the brake caliper itself can also interfere. So when you install the caliper onto this bracket, make sure that the caliper is fully seated against this bracket. If not, it's probably binding up on a little bit of material on the knuckle. That's very important. We did run into that on Tommy's car and I had to make an additional cut and grind. If there's a gap, you might have to, you know, make an adjustment, file a little bit, but just be very cautious of that um, to make sure that the caliper is fully seated against the bracket. This next part is really hard to show on camera, but you have to do a little bit of massaging right where that yellow paint is. If you don't, that will hit the bracket. So you gotta shorten that just a little bit. I'm gonna use my mini belt sander to take care of that. All right, now that we have the knuckle here trimmed and ready to accept the bracket, we're going to install, we're going to install our rotor centering ring. This is actually more of a tool than a part. Put this on the hub and it allows the rotor to be perfectly centered. And the torque of the lug nuts is actually what holds it in place. This just centers it. This will come with the bracket when you order it. All right, now we can finally install this bracket. They are labeled left and right. I'm gonna put the bolts through this way. Now you can get these bolts on your own. I have listed on the website the size and thread pitch that you need, uh, but, but to make things simpler, I do offer the hardware as an additional purchase. Because these are big front brakes, I do feel a little bit better by putting some Loctite on these bolts. The 3D printed ring holds this rotor on perfect. Just like that. All right, with the rotor on, now we can install this gigantic caliper. Another thing you might run into after torquing all this down, um, you might put the rotor back on in the wheel and find that when you spin it, the rotor might be hitting the caliper. That is possible because there is a little bit of play in the bolt holes for the bracket to the knuckle and also the caliper to the bracket. There's just a little bit of tolerance that gives you some wiggle. So if you are running into a interference situation where the rotor is touching something, just loosen up the hardware and, you know, move this bracket in the direction that you need to, to avoid that interference. And it should fit perfectly fine once you get this aligned just right.
All right, got the new brake hose installed too and bled the brakes. I don't think I need to show you that. If you're coming from the stock Mark III Super Brakes, you don't need to touch the brake hose and change it. Just need to swap over the caliper and obviously bleed the brakes. But now this FredTech Big Brake Kit is installed in this Mark III Supra and it is absolutely massive and looks freaking sick. He's got my front and rear brake kit installed on his car and I know a lot of people have asked me about if the master cylinder needs upgraded. After bleeding his brakes, um, his pedal did feel a tiny bit soft, but we're not sure. We don't even know what normal feels like anymore in these cars because we have so many other vehicles that we drive. Um, we're not totally sure what the normal pedal is supposed to feel like. But some advice that I can offer, if you do this upgrade and after a bunch of bleeding, if you feel that the pedal is softer than it was before, um, what you can do is adjust the rod for the brake booster to the brake pedal. You can adjust that rod to put some preload on the master cylinder. So basically, if you loosen the fork on the rod that it touches to the clutch pedal, that would force the rod a little bit into the master cylinder, engaging the brake system a little bit early, and that'll take up a little bit of softness in the pedal. I don't think you need to upgrade the master cylinder, and this also depends on the age and health of your master cylinder, but it definitely does not require an upgrade. But to take away a little bit of the softness in that pedal, the first initial press, you can adjust the rod on your brake pedal. And if you are interested in this brake kit or the rear brake kit, I will have a link in the description down below. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Thanks.